NASCAR banned this man for a hole that they couldn't even see. When the rules said stock carburetor, Smokey Eunuch didn't hear limitation. He heard opportunity. Because while NASCAR was busy measuring jets and bores, Smokey was drilling holes in places they'd never look. Microscopic holes that made the carburetor lie. And here's the crazy part. While they were trying to stop him, a major name in the industry was quietly figuring out the same trick. One got you banned, the other got you a warranty. Same idea, different badge. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Okay, so back in the 60s and early 70s, NASCAR was obsessed with one thing, stock. Stock carburetor, stock intake, stock everything. Inspectors would crawl all over your setup with calipers and pin gauges. Bore size? Check. Throttle blades? Check. Main jets? Check. They measured what they could see. But here's what they didn't get. A carburetor doesn't make power because of what you measure. It makes power because of air signal. Most people in NASCAR, they had no clue what that even meant. Smokey did. All right, so here's the thing inspectors never learned. Main jets, those control how much fuel can flow. That's it. Air bleeds, those control when it flows and how it mixes. Inside every carb, there's this passage called the emulsion tube. Fuel comes up from the main well, meets air from these little bleed holes, and that's where the magic happens. Those bleeds decide how the fuel curve shapes across RPM, how well it atomizes, whether it shows up smooth or dumps in all at once. Fuel are just the faucet. Air bleeds are the brain deciding when to open it and how hard. Mess with the bleeds and suddenly the carb stops acting like the math says it should. It starts acting like it knows what the engine wants. And here's what Smokey understood that nobody else did. Fuel doesn't do a dang thing until air tells it to move. Control the air signal, you control everything. Now, Smokey wasn't the only one who figured this out. While he was drilling holes in his garage, engineers in a major OEM were asking a way safer question. What if the engine decided when it wanted more air instead of just the driver stomping the pedal? They weren't trying to cheat. They were just asking the same question with better lawyers. So Smokey looks at the NASCAR rulebook and realizes something beautiful. The rules said jet sizes had to be stock, venturi diameter had to be stock, throttle bore had to be stock, but nobody said anything about where air bleeds could be. Nobody said how many you could add, and nobody, and I mean nobody, was tearing the carb body apart to measure internal passages. So Smokey did what Smokey always did. He went where they weren't looking. The air bleed trick. So Smokey starts drilling extra air bleed holes in places inspectors would never check, inside the booster venturi, along the emulsion tube, down in the main well. And these weren't random. He sized and placed them so, low RPM, carb runs lean and clean, passes every pull test. Mid-range, fuel delivery smooths out, progressive and controlled. High RPM, the emulsion curve goes aggressive, the engine pulled harder the faster it spun, not because it was getting more fuel total, but because the fuel was showing up exactly when the engine could actually use it. The carburetor wasn't flowing more air, it was just delivering fuel way smarter. To NASCAR inspectors checking jets with pin gauges, stock holly. To the engine, custom fuel system that responded to load like it had a brain. Now here's the uncomfortable part. Smokey wasn't making this up. He was proving something real. And once you prove a principle works, it doesn't stay illegal forever. It just gets repackaged. So NASCAR's inspection back then went like this. Visual check for obvious mods, pin gauges for jet sizing, calipers for venturi diameter, float levels, power valve springs, basic flow test. That's it. They weren't pulling the main body apart. They weren't measuring every bleed hole. They sure as heck weren't mapping emulsion curves at different RPMs. So Smokey's carbs passed everything. But his cars kept doing things they shouldn't. Pulling harder off corners, 
making power more consistently through the range. Throttle response that felt sharper. Different tracks, different cars, same advantage. Stock carbs acting not stock. Finally, NASCAR tears one completely down and tests it under actual load. And yeah, there it is. The carb wasn't flowing more CFM. It was just distributing fuel way better. It wasn't cheating the dimensions. It was cheating expectations. See, NASCAR called it cheating because they didn't understand airflow theory yet. But airflow doesn't care about rule books. And somewhere else, inside a major manufacturer's engineering office, that same idea was getting translated into cast aluminum, vacuum signals, and factory part numbers. Quietly, politely, legally. This is where Smokey becomes a legend. He doesn't argue the measurements, doesn't deny what the carb did. He argues the rules. If you didn't write it down, that's your problem. NASCAR rewrites the rulebook. Smokey keeps pushing. They add air bleed specs. He finds new passages. They start sealing carburetors. He modifies them before they get sealed. Fines? Keeps winning. Track bands? Just grins. Smokey paid the price for being early. He got fined, banned, called a problem. Meanwhile, the exact idea he proved kept spreading through the industry, just with better paperwork in a PR department. But Smokey understood something most people never get. The rules only protect what they understand. And there's always something they don't understand yet. Look, here's what Smokey actually proved. The biggest advantages don't come from breaking rules. They come from understanding the system better than the people writing the rules. Air bleeds looked like tiny details. They were the whole game. NASCAR eventually caught up. Sealed carbs, spec systems, internal inspections. But for a few perfect years, Smokey had a carburetor that could think. And the rulebook didn't even know what questions to ask. Here's the part nobody likes to admit. Smokey didn't lose. He just wasn't supposed to win that way. The industry didn't reject his idea. It absorbed it. Because the next time a major manufacturer sold you a carburetor that let the engine decide when power showed up, that wasn't an accident. That was the same idea, just finally made acceptable. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, give us your thoughts and please try to be nice. Maybe on the next video we dive into that manufacturer that found the same trick that Smokey did. Any thoughts on which OEM we are talking about? Let us know if you do, or if you have a better topic we should cover. And please, give this a like and maybe a follow if it isn't too much trouble. We don't bite. Tips are appreciated too. <laughs> LOL, just joking.